bit. All right, there we go. Bring the microphone a little, a little closer. How about this? Should be good. All right, so, hello. <laughs> uh, today, you know, we spent the last couple of coding streams working on, well, we spent, I think, a lot of coding streams over the last few months working on more backend things in Rust and then starting to look at um, learning about Pulumi and doing a little bit in TypeScript, but then uh, switching that to Python. Uh, but a lot of backend stuff, right, for Gloaming Telegram, which is the, the overall project and that still exists. Um, and I was thinking that it's about time to kind of look at the kind of the other end of this, the, the front end, if you will. Uh, and let me go so many, so many tabs, so many things. So to kind of contextualize this, right? So we have this workflow that, uh, that I want to implement that some, some bits of this are kind of in a way implemented, but I want to realize it in, in like one, um, application, right. That does, does it all. Um, and so a lot of the work of late has been focused in, in this area on the back end, providing kind of the, a scalable implementation using AWS that I won't have to, you know, host locally. Um, and it allows me to leverage some things that exist in AWS. Uh, and so the other side of this is, well, all this workflow, right. Of like taking the streams and, um, building out projects and then rendering out episodes, there needs to be a UI. And so I have a bit of a UI that I have been, uh, playing around with. Um, it's been probably like a month, a month and a half since I really worked on this until yesterday when I was like, I think I want to get back on this. And that's kind of why I decided I was going to do this on stream today. So, um, this is not the whole UI. And of course, if you've been following along with the project, there is um, a lot of UI that's already built using React Admin. And that I probably will keep some form of into the future, kind of like for administrative um, interfaces or what have you. But what I want is more of a, a workflow tool. And so there's going to be a few stages to that, right? So that's kind of what's, what's captured here. We have like, we define what a series is somehow, some way, um, probably through some kind of CRUD interface. And then we can ingest streams. Um, that ties into kind of what I want to do here with like integrating with t Twitch directly to like, um, either see when I start streaming or like populate stream details ahead of time, those sorts of things. So there's like one UI, it's about this, like one um, page or workflow or something. I don't know, I have not really sketched that out yet, um, other than in vague terms, like what I just said. And then there's this, okay, now I have a bunch of media files, media uh, video clips, right? So I have a bunch of like um, 20 minute segments of video, because that's how I locally record. Um, that I will be pushing into AWS, have been pushing into AWS, uh, for over a year at this point. Um, and they've just been archived there. Um, and then what I want to do is I want to be able to use some AI, uh, as I have been doing to, uh, transcribe and summarize those media files, but to surface that information in a way that I haven't been to date, which is to look at 
Um, in fact, maybe it's time I should actually start this. Hopefully it still starts. I, I did some dependency updates and, and various things recently. Is it npm run dev or is it npm start? So this is using beat. Uh, and the tentative name for this was transcript editor. Um, we don't have a video file here because I removed it. Let me add another one so that this will work. One second. Also, where did the music go? I think I'll have to restart pretzel. One second. How about now? So let me go find a video file. Take one of the rendered ones. Public copy. Um, okay. So uh, let's see. How does this work? So right now, this um, transcript editor is is what I call it here, but the actual repo is called Glowing Telegram Video Editor. Um, the the naming disparity is because initially. I want to really focus on um, kind of reviewing the transcript and like finding highlights and those sorts of things. And I, over time, realized that I wanted to move kind of all of my video editing and kind of the the production of the the rendering of the final videos into Glowing Telegram as well, rather than using a separate tool. And so, the scope of this has increased. Um, it's not necessarily, I, I think my conception of this is that this repo is going to be the UI component um, it, for the video editor. So not the entire UI for Glowing Telegram, right? So it's gonna be kind of this region here of the workflow is gonna be represent, the UI for it will be here. Um, and I, I'm, Feeling like what I will likely start wanting to do is break out separate repositories for different pieces of functionality rather than trying to do a mono repo um, because that has some some consequences and it's just kind of easier especially as I'm looking at like individual components that I might want to publish as you know a package um, either on um, uh, crates.io or npm or what have you okay so for this front end component right now, I just have this data.json file that has some sample data, kind of simulating what we might be getting back from the back end. And so that video file now is app 131. So I save that and I go back to the front end. Maybe we'll have a video file. It should be like play components here. what happens when you work on something and then set it down for a month or two. How does it work? Uh, F131.mp4. Partial content. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So, um... Oh, interesting. Why why was this not here and now it's okay, well anyway. So this is this is the idea, right? Is that uh, we have an embedded view of the video with the timeline. And then uh, I have both a chat view, so I can see of course this is not real. This is just some fixed text. Uh, and then I have a transcript of the things that I was saying, and again this is this doesn't actually correspond to this video. This is just a random video. Um, and then if I turn off follow playback, and then I also pause this, um, I can 
Now I have controls to zoom in and zoom out on the timeline. I can scroll on the timeline. I can click to a specific place in the timeline. And then the colored boxes represent these different things here that are talked about here. Silent segment, uh, chat messages, the little the dots here when chat happened. Um, so that gets more dense or less dense. Again, all made up data. A highlighted segment, so these are the highlights down here. We have also a sidebar of highlights. So the, the blue sections are areas of attention in the video. Um, and then, or areas of interest, I think is the idea with highlighted segment. I made all this up, right? So this is this is just my idea of how I might want to surface, sur uh, surface information to be able to then pluck out things to put into a, a final video. Attention segments are maybe need, need a better word, but essentially the idea being things that are should be looked at more closely. Um, it's like there's oh. So attentions, uh, so I think when I asked ChatGPT to generate uh, this content, I was like, attention should be things that are like, not really relevant to the, um, the topic of the stream, right? So this is what it's calling attention to, those sorts of things. Um, and that's something else that we'll have to, uh, outside of this work of the front end is like, how are we getting this data? And that's gonna be, prompting uh, that's going to be um, you know, looking at um, the transcript that we have been getting right and potentially also chat messages which is something that I think at one point we've been working on uh, a twitch bot in uh, elixir to grab chat messages and also include that in the data set that we're using here. So this is UI. And uh, I think one observation to make one second, I realized it didn't open this up. Good. Um, one observation to make is this is not a video editor, <laughs> which is, uh, like I said, the, the project uh, in here is called transcript editor. And it's not even an editor. Well, I mean, you can See, can we, yeah, we can actually edit different parts of the transcript, uh, sort of, theoretically, if I would have implemented that part. But the idea is to, to be able to edit that, but also to just, in general, to select things. Um, interesting. That's a bug. Should probably fix that. If we're panned over, then the placement of the cursor is not relative to where we're panned. Uh, so let's add that. At some point, maybe I'll add these to uh, issues in GitHub. But for now, I just have a to-do list. Um, when clicking on the timeline, um, and Timeline is panned. Yeah, the click should be relative to this visible timeline. Exactly. Okay. Um, so this is half of what I want and it has some bugs and probably some things that I would want to improve upon, but we have a thing um, here. that mostly works and some, some glitchiness there and in, in this. Um, like all of these things work, all that. Um, so what's outside of the scope of working on this front end is actually getting this data, right? So the plan for this UI component is to have it be given the data and for it to then return what? Well, it needs to give back uh, something. Um, essentially, a set of selections. Uh, 
so cuts essentially of the video to then be put into a project and assembled. Um, yeah. And I guess the question is going to be, there's the other side of that, right? In this workflow, right? And then if we have a project and we select bits, clips of media, and we put them together into episodes, does the assembly of the video elements into episodes, is that also, is that the same UI? I'm not sure yet. I think we can, if we can, I think maybe not, it doesn't really, or not this, this layout anyway, right? So I may include that in this repo. So we can have two bits to that. We can have kind of, we can, we can provide multiple components and a repo. Imagine that. Um, yeah, I think something along those lines where we have one component that's, that's this essentially kind of the media, the clip selection or the cut selection. Um, and then another that's concerned with like assembling those clips, uh, those cuts back into a one or more episodes. And this sounds very much like what I would be doing in DaVinci Resolve, but the idea, one, one of the things is that since I decided that I was gonna archive all my stuff in S3 and make it available for this tool, um, if I wanted to continue to like manually edit stuff in DaVinci Resolve and, and do that, a bit more awkward because then I have to go and download the, the raw video files um, or alternatively I could have done none of this and I think DaVinci Resolve has like a, a cloud offering and some new stuff but I don't care about that because I want to build something myself <laughs> uh, and uh, have the you know uh, have something I built that I think will be fun and uh, fun to build and hopefully useful for my needs and open source. Okay. So that's a lot of talking. <laughs> but the context is important, right? So um, getting a little bit more into the details. And yeah, I think I, I think I will convert these into issues. Uh, or maybe. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll see. Um, what was I going to say? So we're using Tailwind, right? So what the project is, like how it's built, right? So we have Tailwind, um, we have uh, React, uh, we have uh, Vite and Vtest. There is Storybook also set up in this, although I don't think I have done any stories. Um, so these are like pre-built stories, I think. Maybe. Yeah. This isn't mine, is it? Yeah, story book header. Okay. Um and then so basically the the work so far is has been just to get, you know, the, the UI as 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 shown here. Um and just to like churn through a bunch of things, a bunch of ideas, a bunch of uh, approaches. It's a very flat set of components right now. Um, and I was thinking, and I think I have a, a note here. Yeah, here we go. Reorg components into folders according to atomic design principles. So I was thinking about doing this because I'm pretty fairly familiar with the, the idea and it, it's a reasonable way, I think, of organizing components. And there's already quite a few, and there's going to be more uh, to manage. Um, this is the approach that I took with um, uh, the other project that I worked on last year on stream. Um, what's it called? <laughs> Daily Jewel, yeah, Daily Jewel, the calorie tracking app. Um, but I, I just wanted to, I didn't want to worry too much about organization before I, of made something 
uh, until it was too painful to manage. And, you know, I mean, there's quite a few components, but not, you know, hundreds. So it's still okay. So let's fix a bug. So when clicking on the timeline, the timeline is panned. The click should be relative to visible, visible timeline. Uh, how does this work? So there is a timeline component uh, here. And we have some use effect hook stuff where we're hooking up dragging to do that on the document so that it works even if you like move the mouse outside the timeline, you can continue dragging and let go. Um, that's an interesting claim. I don't think I want to make that claim. Uh, not a lot of comments because I just, <laughs> I had, uh, I think a lot of this was written pretty close together and, you know, time wise and just kind of churning through things. Oh yeah, that's where that comment came from, great. So some comments. Uh, so we have a timeline and the timeline is composed of all of this event handling stuff. And then a timeline element mapped over elements. So what is elements? Elements is a, ah. Right, so we have this lens idea, and the lens is kind of where we've panned on the timeline and where we've zoomed in. So it gives us a perspective of what we want to show in the UI. Um, so that we can say, you know, this both manages like where we're panned and zoomed, but also then lets us say, hey, give me everything that we should be able to see element wise, right? So elements here refers to like, the highlighted segments, the chat messages, the silent segments, all of these elements that populate the timeline. And then we uh, map over that and show them. And then timeline segment marker, what is that? What is this? Start in class name. Play ahead time. Oh, cursor. Okay. So timeline seg uh, time segment marker is a generic component that you can give different classes to. In this case, this represents the cursor uh, on the timeline. I'm really tempted to like make a component that's just called timeline cursor and put this in it just to clarify what's going on there, but I'm not going to bother yet. We're, we're trying to fix a bug. So when I click in a container click, this is probably the, the function that's getting called. And then the user is dragging, don't seek to the time. Dragging is detected by the mouse moving more. Uh, this, this wording could be better. Having currently um, by the Movement mouse lasting longer than 250 seconds. Okay, I think that that is clear, but again, it has nothing to do with the bug. I'm just trying to trace through the logic here. Uh, container pixel width is container ref current client width. So container ref is a ref that we create in tie to the div that wraps everything. So, right, so there's a div around the timeline. I'm really surprised right clicking there. Okay, cool. Uh, it worked. Yeah, so, it's this div, I think, with many things inside of it. 
So that's that's the div that we're we're grabbing. And now it's just like that overflow hidden, all that stuff. That's that container ref. So we're getting client width. Defined is as the inner width of an element and pixels includes padding, but excludes borders, margins, and vertical scroll bars. That makes sense. I think. I don't think we have any uh, margin or borders or anything like that, fortunately. Oh, offset left. Number of pixels that the upper left corner of the current element is offset to the left within the offset parent node. For block level elements, relative to the offset parent. Uh huh. I don't. I don't think any of this is the source of the bug, but I'm since I'm looking closely at this anyway, I'm questioning what I did. Almost there. Hey, Brainless. Brainless months. Society just subscribed for 11 months. Almost there. Indeed. Almost a year. How are you doing? How am I? Doing good. I... Pretty good. I, uh, I think I overate yesterday. <laughs> Took uh, quite a while to get to sleep last night. Uh, but better than the day before, in which for some reason I woke up at like four in the morning. Couldn't get back to sleep. So yesterday was a pretty long day. Um, but did eventually get to sleep. Got some sleep last night. And, uh, you know. Took some time to wake up, but you're annoyed with fighting an idea. How can you fight an idea? Can you fight an idea? <laughs> I guess people do. Or are you coming to grips with an idea? Like figuring it out. Offset X in container was okay. So I suspect this might be wrong anyway. It's interesting though, because this is, what, when does this work and when does this not? So clicking on the timeline works if I'm panned all the way to the left. But if I scroll, then it doesn't. I'm surprised I hadn't noticed this when I was working on this before. That really stands out. Uh, and I can scroll wheel to zoom in. And so that's also broken. If I'm panned all the way to the left and I click, that also works. Interesting. Uh, I think have some console console logs already. Uh, I think I might have to add some logging here. It's this lens that get length is interesting. What is get length? Get the length of the lens in milliseconds. So like how for how zoom in we are. Yes. So that isn't. Hmm. So I think this it feels like this math shouldn't be here, one. <laughs> and two, uh, it needs to take into account us panning in the lens. And Brainless says, I'm trying to create two functions. Basically, I need to sanitize our response before sending it back to the customer, which requires two things. Remove any empty fields, nil, empty maps or list, 
And if that removal creates an empty map, then remove that key recursively. That part is working. Now I need another one, which we'll use in our open API specs to ensure that if a map has any field, which is an optional list that will inject that key with an empty list. And you need to apply both. Are you, are you doing one and then taking the result and applying the other? Like you're removing all the empty things and then you're going back to look for fields that are optional lists and adding them back if they're not present. Our guideline is to never send in the objects unless it's an optional list. Let's see. I, <laughs> I mean, I guess that, that that is something that one could say, this is what we want to do and then have to do it. Um, How, I guess if you have an open API spec, you could just like use that. Ooh, parse that, parse that and uh, like traverse it and build up like, uh, I don't know, a set of JSON paths. I don't know that, that seems like a lot of like a lot of work to do in API responses just to satisfy that. Struggling with recursion, recursion, recursion reuses. I don't know, there's some appeals to like, if you can, for a given, like if you know what the response is coming from, so you know where I'm your spec to look at, then look at kind of the shape of the response and build up a set of, um, what, a set of key paths, like a traversal for each place that is an optional list, and then you have a set of them, or it force everyone to set empty lists on the code. Uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Then, uh, well, I mean, even better thing, even better thing to do would be to have some kind of static uh, analysis of your API or some kind of types or something that enforce the shape of the data coming back from the API to match that set of things. You have that? Then why do you need to do anything? Everything should be correct then. <laughs> Maybe it's not specific enough. Maybe it would not be worthwhile to have it be specific enough. Don't know. Don't want to fail the response because someone did not add list by default. Right. Um, well, I was thinking more like compile time not like runtime type checks, but like as part of your build process, verifying that the, the, the types were correct to match the API. Specifically to avoid having to have runtime checks of responses, because that would be, uh, you know, that would, that would be a cost. Maybe that's a worthwhile cost. Maybe uh, the types are not, <laughs> uh, it, you know, Maybe it's not practical to enforce those specific requirements as to the, the shape of the response in the language and the specific details of where you're at. I don't know. I feel like this code is wrong though. I mean, I already know it is because we see that it's doing the wrong thing, but what's the right thing, right? So we have this relative click um, and this is interesting. Container pixel width, offset X in container. So this is our X location in the page of the, like where the mouse was clicked. 
but this is probably wrong. Offset left on the div. That's not, it's not right. Or maybe it is. Okay, so like if I click right over here, yeah, so 32095. So offset X in container should be like, how many pixels from the left border are we? And container pixel width is not gonna change. It's gonna be the same thing here. So if I click way over here, it's, it's almost the same number. Now if I pan and I click to the left, that makes sense. That's that's good. Somewhere like in the middle. It's about in the middle. Brainless says that would be nice, but we don't check the response until it reaches the end of the process. And the process has no knowledge of the spec, which is the operation ID. Doing that would involve considerable refactoring. Let's see, so you have like multiple layers where the thing that's originating the response is not necessarily, you can't necessarily enforce like a, a function that's returning the data to have the shape expected by the API or something like that. Uh, kind of have it working, but when I run the reduce and merge the maps, the keys get overwritten. Ah, we're an elixir, right? <laughs> Uh, reluctant to add a deep merge library for this. That's fair. Yes. I was thinking of like specifically having like identifying where in the structure the update needs to be made and then like traversing down into it. This would be like, instead of this being like a, um, a, uh, a merging operation, this would be more of like destructive updates. Uh, in the thing, but correct. We only validate the response afterwards before something. Sure. Okay, so I think despite my reservations about offset left here in this context, it does seem to be doing the right thing. I wonder what if I zoom out or something? Yeah. If I zoom in. which should be essentially uh, view coordinates, right? View coordinates. So if I click over here, yeah, okay. So that seems fine. What we're missing here is that this value needs to be offset by kind of the offset of the lens. What methods did I make on lens? Time to relative. What does time to relative do? Converts a time value to a relative zero one. Okay, no. Uh, pan, zoom in, reset. So pan, set lens. Ah, no, no. Get lens length. There's not like a get lens offset. I think, I think what I want is actually kind of the opposite of times a relative, kind of the inverse of it, right? I have a number between zero and one. Uh, let me go back to back and back and back. Wherever I was, here we go. Okay. So relative click is a, is a number between zero and one. And th this is wrong. What I want is uh, is a time. So I want relative to time. Uh, Brainless says, just tried with the library for deep merging. That works, but extra dependency. What's wrong with the... <laughs> I, I know uh, in, in, my, in my professional life that sometimes it can be um, annoying to get things like that approved. I don't know if you have an approval process for third-party libraries, but uh, 
you're on. You're of the idea of less dependencies, better code. Well, I guess that depends. Are, are you writing better code than <laughs> the author of the library that you want to use? Okay, and I don't have, okay, so I have time to relative. I don't have a rel, oh, I do have relative to time. I just didn't expose it in the context, in the, in the hook, okay. Relative to time. Uh, that's silly. We should just use the function that I already made. Relative to time. Oh, no, not release. Relative to time. Amazing. And that breaks the interface. So I'll add that back. And that's the correct argument order, lens and relative. Lens and relative. Okay. Cool. Um, why did we want, I guess we wanted an integer here. Uh, so what I will do is I'm going to do lens dot relative to time, relative click, round it, and maybe that fixes the issue. Also, we have another bug, which is that um, on load, the video uh, does not appear, nor do the, the controls play it. Yeah. Uh, how did I fix this before? I think I, oh, I just advanced the time. There we go. Uh, details, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, is like, it, it, it does legitimately sometimes make sense. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do both sides here, right? So on the one hand, it does make sense that you have a specific problem that's rooted in uh, the, the types and the shape of data and the thing that you were doing. And you can potentially make something that's very compact that solves your problem and is more effective and potentially has less bugs possible bugs because it's just smaller in scope. On the other hand, uh, a library can have a lot of people looking at it, have a lot of focus on making a general solution that can solve the problem when applied and require not too much left to implement. And there's a spectrum, spectrum in between those things and sometimes Neither of those things are true, and you just gotta make the best of it. Okay, so if I click at the beginning, I go to the beginning. If I click to the middle, I go to the middle. If I click to the end, I go to the end. If I zoom out, or zoom in, uh, and I pan, this continues to work. If I pan to the, to the right, okay. Bug fixed. Let's reset the, the zoom. For now, I will call this code as functional. It's doing both things correctly. Yes, there you go. All right, and then if I reset, I can still pan, and it works. And the so there, there's two timelines. There's this one that I made that shows like all of our different objects on the timeline, the highlights and stuff, and um, that can be zoomed in and out and panned. And then the timeline of the video player that I also implemented is just the absolute view, right? So this video is like an hour long uh, because it's just one of my rendered episodes. It's gonna go up on YouTube eventually when I get to that. <laughs> and uh, 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 yeah, pretty happy with that. Okay, we fixed the bug. Uh, and I guess because it's nice to keep track of these things, do I want to... I don't have protected branches or anything, so let me I'm just gonna do this, and I'm just going to commit uh, this. Yeah, I'm gonna commit anyway. And there it goes. 
So I, I've had this project on my computer um, in a Git repository, like just in a local repository, but not pushed up. Uh, so this now exists as glowing telegram video editor because uh, <laughs> I didn't, I wanted to have this as a, as a separate repo so I could work on it. And it is 81% TypeScript. All right, and there we go. At some point I will add like actions and stuff. Maybe I should turn on Dependabot. Uh, let's see, how do I do that? Is that code security? Um, uh, sure. And like that, enable Dependabot alerts. Always good to have it online. Computers break or other things can happen unless you have backup tool. Um, yeah, I should I should do backup some more. But most everything goes onto GitHub. Um, anyway, let's do version updates. Um, keep our dependencies up to date. Close some of these tabs they don't need anymore. Uh, package ecosystem. It's NPM, yeah. Uh, weekly's fine. All right. And then it's a very long readme of things that this project doesn't actually do. <laughs> uh, I'll get a list to one there. Okay, good. Um, as I as I said here, it's uh, it's written from the perspective of what, what I'm planning on doing. It's not a reflection of what's already done. So it's just kind of a um, a write up of what I want to do with this video editor thing. Review and edit video highlights, moments that require additional attention, and possible transcript errors, and select clips for rendering. Okay. And uh, pull that change down as well. Okay, so on load, the video does not appear, nor do the controls uh, to play it, is the next issue. Uh, I probably want to work on that. Also, add a loading state to the video player? Question mark. Um, maybe. Support multiple videos in the timeline and sequence is really going to be important because um, the idea is going to be so like right now, if we go to the which component is it? Is it viewport? No. Is it oh video player, of course. So video player has video player controls and the progress bar on those things. But the, the core of this is just the video tag, right? And source. Um, and what I will want to eventually be able to do is essentially be able to play through a set of video files, right? So like have the recording of the stream, it's like, you know, five or six or eight uh, video files that are like 20 minute segments. And I will want to play them like end to end and have that whole thing be the timeline. Um, so we will need to update this to support that. Uh, implement filtering search in sidebar. Not anymore. So we have sidebar. Um, this doesn't work. <laughs> it's not implemented yet. Uh, make zooming on the timeline pan towards the mouse cursor. Right, so right now, a thing that is, is pretty common, right, is that if I zoom and my mouse is here, like, it should be centered, right? Or as centered as it can be, it should, like, pan towards what I'm zooming at, and it's not doing that right now. So that's that's a convenience from, you know, I think that's that's kind of a, a common thing when you're, like, on something that's panable and zoom, zoomable, that it, it zooms towards what you're aimed at, and it doesn't do that yet. As storybook uh, set up for components and reorgs, so this is like 
let's formalize like all the different components that are in this and make it so that it's easy to like test things independently and work on them and that sort of stuff. So that I want to do that uh, eventually. Create edit overlay when editing any of the annotations drawing from the left side of the screen. So the idea is that moving from this being kind of just a, a viewer to of data to being something you can edit, being able to select uh, a highlight, um, which I'm going to have to think about. Maybe I can do like a control click or something to like select here. Ooh, actually, that's a really good idea that I don't think I wrote. Um, let's let's do that after. Make control uh, click on an annotation, select it, add it to the current selection. Yeah. Select it. Yeah. Um, and then let's see, add a close in, uh, a close in, I think is, is, there are better phrase for this. It's less ambiguous. Um, add a uh, focus uh, pop over to fine tune the time range of an annotation in the editor, right? So, like, this is, you know, you can zoom in a bunch manually and do stuff, but if you want to. have really granular selection, maybe some way of doing that. Uh, can select group of highlights to combine into an episode. So this is the big thing, right? So the end of this process is selecting things. I think the idea is going to be that our, our, our AI prompting stuff is going to generate highlights, right? And the idea will be trim out any things that are just not actually relevant um, and refine any that are. Yeah, these buttons don't do anything yet. Uh, refine then any that are and then select the ones we want and then go to kind of the next part of the workflow where we're then assembling the, the, the highlights together into an episode or multiple episodes. And that's where we get into like a project, right? Where, um, we would potentially, here's how I see this working. So we analyze a string, right? Um, in this and we review it and we pluck out things. And then uh, we dump all of that result into a project. And then that could be potentially multiple streams that we review and dump into the same project. Going back to like this, right? Multiple streams, video, clips can go into a single project and then a project can be rendered out into one or multiple episodes. So that that's where I'm going with this. Um, okay. So and then I'm just kind of reviewing what my to-dos were from before to make sure they still make sense to me um, as kind of my thinking of like what I want to do with this project has uh, evolved. So add a slot for actions on the whole form. Can we extract child components that have more slots context to avoid prop drilling? So this is something that I um, kind of in, in terms of organization for react components, I want to think about like how we can make these components, which, you know, here it's like a freestanding little app, right? Just the front end app. Um, but this is going to integrate into the overall workflow of glowing telegram. And so the components need to integrate with the larger app that's going to provide the, the hooks to talk to the back end and that sort of thing. Uh, and that is where this is going. Um, but it's nice. One, one of the motivations here for having a separate repo um, is like all the stuff for this front end stuff is, is in one place. I can have like um, GitHub actions and checks and those sorts of things. Um, I know at one point I was talking about there's a tool 
that I used to use a lot called, called Wallaby. Um, and it's available for free if you're working on open source projects. And, um, but it doesn't really support working on mono repos all that well, especially like ones where the, the project is like, yeah, it, it's in a mono repo. The part that I want to work on is like this uh, node app or this front end stuff that's in a subdirectory. doesn't really like it. Um, so that, that was, you know, a consideration. Um, at some point I'll have to like link from here to there or be able to get sub modules or something. Uh, because I, I do think there are things here like maybe GTF of MPEG that could be the, in their own repo. Um, and we can kind of pursue plucking things out. Um, but what I'm going to do now is somehow it's been an hour. Uh, so I'm going to take a little break here so I can go stretch the legs and um, we'll come back in a few minutes. And I think it'll be time to uh, troubleshoot some more of these. Uh, well, this is a bug and then add some features. Uh, yeah, so bug, feature, feature, feature. I think really none of these are bugs except for this first one that, that I noticed uh, this morning. So we'll, we'll work on that uh, after the break. So, BRB. Yeah. 